Solana and ICP, two of cryptocurrency's all-time greatest projects. And I think by the end of the 2025 bull run, the data and the charts will have proven that for all the haters. But the question I'm going to answer today is, has the storm finally settled? Are we right around the corner from an absolute parabolic run with both of these projects? Well, what I'm going to do for you today is show you the technical and fundamental analysis that proves a massive amount of growth is right around the corner for both of these 10 out of 10 projects. And of course, I'm going to tell you not just about that, but also how you can apply this to your current portfolio. So with that said, the main thing here is to teach you something new. And if you do learn something new, help support the channel with a like on the video and subscribe importantly, so you can achieve your crypto goals. Before we continue, I have an urgent announcement I need to make for everyone who is invested in Solana and Solana's ecosystem and you missed the Saga 1 phone, the Saga 2 phone still has their pre-orders available. Use my link down below. Go ahead and grab yourself uh, one of these phones. We did manage to bring it out a week ago when it was going for $450 in the founder window, now for $500, so not too bad. $50 bucks more, but that's not really a massive deal. And then in a few days, it will go up to you know increased price in the supporter window and then from there be you know, when it releases in 2025, likely a thousand dollars at base value and maybe like the original Saga phone, you know, it could be a few thousand dollars sold in the future. I'm planning to buy a couple more myself. I already have one I bought in the founder window for a novelty item to not, you know, unbox and one to maybe give away on the channel as well. So use a link down below you have about four days before the price likely increases. And of course you do support the channel by using the link down below. Now let's begin the video by touching on something I never see really many people talk about and that's how to apply these two projects to your portfolio. See, I'm guessing most of you are new to the space or at least new enough to not really know how to actually leverage these projects because you don't want to be putting these into the category of I want a 30x out of these projects. You're going to be holding your bags for the next bull run. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. So basically cut a long story very short here because I know a lot of you already know this sort of stuff from watching the channel. When you look at your projects and crypto portfolio in general, you have your risk and reward. Your risk looks at what projects you can buy based on how much you're able to lose in the market, right? If you have $100,000 you invest and you can only afford to lose $10,000, right? That means you have a 10% uh, risk tolerance, which means you don't really want to be buying risky projects. You want to be buying projects up here, okay? High market cap, projects that have been around for a long time. And then also reward. How many multiples do you want out of the market based on sort of your goals and ambitions in the real world, okay? And you mix these together and you can kind of mix and match and find the right projects for you. And in this case, when you look at Solana and ICP, they fit towards the higher side of the risk profile. Solana is a 49 billion market cap right now, so it fits in the category of low risk. Okay, so almost, quotation marks, guaranteed rewards in crypto. Nothing's ever guaranteed in crypto, mind you. But it's also low reward, okay, because it is such a high market cap still. So I would say looking at a bit of 5x from today's price, give or take, and ICP fits in the category beneath it because it's in the 1 billion to 25 billion market cap range which is classified as low risk. So it's still sort of lower risk, but it is mid reward. So you do have more multiples to be made. In this case, around a 15X or so. Market cap's about 6 billion. So it is relative to the market and where we will be soon, a fairly small size project. It's just hard to believe that when you're so accustomed to a 1 billion market cap project being large, we have to take a step back. So that's kind of how you want to use these projects in your portfolio and more of a safety net or an anchor to save yourself against your higher risk plays. And again, I would look at it as if you can afford to lose X amount of the money you've put into the market to be a safeguard, this is how you want to use both of these projects. Not so much the I want to generate, you know, multi-millions unless you already have a high uh, net worth. Now let's begin with the technical analysis. Now I want to say full disclosure, you guys know I keep it 100% no BS on the channel. I am not the best TA guy, but I didn't make these charts. These charts were made from a professional or I would I would deem as a professional, right? He's been in the markets for a very, very long time. And actually you will all probably know him if you are in the private community or Discord. Mark, my second in charge, my admin, my go-to is an expert. He's right well more than he's wrong when it comes to technical analysis. Don't tell him I said that. He's probably watching the video anyway. And so he made these to share with you, okay? And he's very bullish on both of these projects and for a very good reason. We'll start with Solana here 
And as you can see on the daily time frame, it has created a cup and handle. Now we're looking at about 148 bucks as the next leg up for Solana, but Mark told me not to really point that out as a massive deal in this case. It did have a golden cross recently form. Uh, Solana recently has crossed over to the 800 days since trading, so since inception, which means we now have access to the 800 day moving average crossed over the 200 day moving average or rather the other way around. So in this case, of course, we have a very strong golden cross, which is a very bullish sign indeed. Over here as well, we have an inverse head and shoulders pattern with again, the 148 day level as the next sort of leg up, or at least where Mark sees resistance to be forming. And on the weekly time frame, we have a multi-year cup and handle growing as well. So this is a strong indication. Solana, of course, is primed and ready to go aka have its massive parabolic run. Now quickly have a look at ICP here. ICP is looking like it's going to hit around $17. That at least is the next strong level of resistance Mark has pointed out to me. And by the way, I wanted to say, Mark's coming on the channel by the way, guys. He will be pretty well presenting all this sort of stuff for you as well as DeFi as well. He's very, very strong in these two areas and that's what he loves to do. So I kind of forgot to mention that earlier on, but Mark will be coming to the channel full time to bring you this. Right, you won't be hearing it through me. And uh, in this case, as you can see here, actually on the weekly time frame, the Gaussian channel has finally flipped green. It hasn't been in the last two years, which of course is another bullish sign as well. So again, $17 likely to be the next level of strong resistance for ICP. Either way, big moves are coming, but I kind of wanted to support all of this with fundamental analysis, right? What I strongly do believe as the make or break factor in the quality of a project. Let's begin here by sort of merging these two worlds. First of all, we can actually have a look at just how exponential these projects have grown since the bull market kicked off mid October. And this, believe it or not, is a very good indication of what is to come because both of these projects reacted instantly to the immediate uptick in the overall market growth. The global market cap and more importantly, Bitcoin initially started to grow and these projects were like a day or two behind Bitcoin. So again, we have to look at the projects that the uh, evangelists and the new community have kind of instantly come into and said, I want to buy these because obviously there is something there, okay? Now in two and a half months, Solana 6 x its price again since the official, I believe, start of the bull run, which means it gained $45 billion in market cap, going from a $9.1 billion market cap way up to here to like a 56 or something billion market cap. So huge increase, $45 billion in two and a half months, guys. One project, it's just insane. To put that into some relative terms, I know a lot of you love HBAR as much as I do. That's like HBAR at the current market cap of $3 billion at 85 or 0.85 cents. 15 xing and going to $1.30 or a 45 billion market cap, okay? And that was just the growth it had, but the actual market cap size of Solana, right? So that just puts into perspective how much money was really thrown into Solana. And let me tell you right now, ICP was not far behind at all. Again, it was one of the market leaders as well as Solana. Two and a half months, it again, 6x at price. Actually, technically speaking, it was just a little less than 6x. I think slanted a little bit more, about 20% more, so not that much. Either way, it gained $6 billion in market cap size. Kind of hard and really sad to know that it was a $1.4 billion market cap and we were ignoring it back then, right? At least we wanted it to go lower, right? How greedy were we? So in any case, both of these projects have shown recently that they can react to the market in a bullish sense, which again is a very, very good indicator that what is to come is likely to be even bigger and larger than this. And how I know is again, all based on my personal fundamental research method, which is focusing on pumpamentals in a way that I actually have, you know, backtracked and, you know, reverse engineered to see how these projects really do grow. And again, we focus on two main things, narrative and the meme. And again, to save all the channel OGs, the, the process of like you know, talking through this again, essentially the narratives is what the projects are primarily known for, not what they kind of are known for, what they're primarily known for. And the meme is the unique aspect. So money flows into crypto, for example, what happens is we have all these different narratives, right? We have layer ones, BPN, Oracle, storage, blah, blah, blah. We have all these different narratives. Okay, so you can see this is layer ones, for example, Solana's in this injective, Multiverse X, SUI, Cosmos, all these different ones. But why do people buy one of these projects over the rest? Why do one 
really take precedence over the others, right? And this is the unique aspect slash the meme. And actually I had a recent call with a founder in crypto, a very, very well-known founder of a big project. And he was telling this to me on a recent call. And I was like, this is amazing to hear because he helped validate this idea for me. Needless to say, let's move on. So as we can see, ICP hits a lot of these narratives which just means that in the bull run, it has multiple or magnitudes more chances to increase its you know baseline for the price of the token but also have these exponential growth spurts when these initial narratives blow up web3 layer one interoperability deep in modularity cloud infrastructure the list goes on maybe even you know bitcoin DeFi or audify is another one there i didn't add it in this list but it definitely could you know be included in that as well now solana only has two but they're, t they're 10 out of 10 narratives right they're very very powerful narratives one, of course, being Web3 Layer 1, and the other just simply being Solana ecosystem, right? Solana's ecosystem, as we'll see in a minute, is really, really going strong. And so I do believe, and strongly, even though Solana only has two of these massive narratives, the fact that its meme is so unique and catered towards what the project is, as we'll see here, I think it you know, definitely warrants the massive success which it is, which, again, is an ETH killer. That's what it kind of models itself as, or at least the label that most people have slapped on it. Now, I hate the term ETH killer, mind you. I don't like that term. It's overused. But if you let me read this to you, it's going to make more sense, right? So you can kind of envision Solana as the next version of Ethereum that has Web2 onboarding as a primary focus, onboarding, you know, the real world. Solana is essentially becoming what ETH couldn't become, a scalable layer one and layer two for mass market adoption. So, you know, as you should all know, ETH has moved away from scaling as a layer one to now saying, hey, we're going to let layer twos come on board and they can be the scalability approach. You guys can just come on board and let all your transactions be secured on our network. But Solana says, screw that. No layer twos, no side chains, no nothing. We're just going to have a blockchain that goes forward in one direction that's highly scalable. Again, cheap, easy to use, so on. And remember, ETH is only where it is because it was the first mover. That's all. That is the whole reason why ETH is where it is. So... In my eyes, could Solana be picking up the slack left behind in terms of, of course, Ethereum being kind of slow relative to today's standards? You know, it's quite expensive, again, relative to today's standards. And while there's a lot of projects, layer twos and dApps built on it, you know, we are seeing a lot of this migration happening to Solana. We'll cover this more in a minute. And of course, ICP is 10 out of 10, right? I've covered this in a recent video on ICP. It is literally a working Web3 cloud. It literally can host anything, front end, back end, the whole kit and caboodle on chain, right? You normally you use Uniswap and what do you interact with? You press those buttons, that's all Web2 that's hosted on a server via a website, okay? The back end is a smart contract when you have the transaction process, but ICP has it all hosted in you know, on chain. Can connect also Web2 to Web3 without oracles. That is amazing, right? Super customizable canisters or smart contracts. Okay, you can literally build anything. And they have a reverse gas model. This is kind of becoming a little bit more popular these days. Kadena, for example, uses this where developers can buy a bunch of the tokens or hold a bunch of their own tokens for users to use without paying gas. So both of these projects, very, very high ranking in their own different ways. So Solana, now we're going to focus on Solana's ecosystem here, because like I said, one of the key unique aspects of Solana is its ecosystem, okay? And it's proven it's very powerful in the last three or four months. Solana right now on DeFi Llama is about rank number five, okay? But it's one of the highest performers on the monthly change in terms of its total value locked in DeFi at about 25%, slightly lower than Ethereum. Now, some of these projects, of course, down here are about the same, if not a lot more like Sui. But again, consider that the total value locked is orders of magnitude cheaper, so it isn't as easy to, to kind of move it. So there is actually reasons why uh, Ethereum's is up so much right now, but I think Solana stands out because it has eight times less protocols built on it than Ethereum does, okay? So it's matching Ethereum right now, which of course is a very, very strong sign. Now, not just that, the 24-hour volume uh, in these DeFi protocols as well is behind Ethereum at number two, by a pretty well good stretch as well. The next highest is Binance Smart Chain at 660 million, okay? And again, that's like a significant amount of TVL higher than Solana. So what I'm trying to show you here is DeFi and overall use of the Solana ecosystem is definitely prevalent, okay? 
And not just, of course, in DeFi, that only takes into consideration DeFi protocols, as we mentioned over here, only 128. Solana has a lot more dApps on it than just 128, okay? But what's more impressive, in my opinion, is Solana also has 87% of all the tokens staked, 87%. Keep in mind, guys, that is substantial. When we look at other projects, right, it's competitors. They are about 60%. I haven't really had, I was struggling to find even these projects, right? Most projects are around 30 to 40 percent again your high performers in this case ada and adam even Polkadot isn't as high as this right they're in the high 60s but that's about it nothing even near 80 percent so again this is a good sign that people have trust in the now this is a good sign that of course solana has a lot of their tokens securing it which is of course fantastic now here's some interesting stats you know i said in a video a few days ago that we don't want to look too deeply into these, you know, metrics that don't really make much sense. But I'm going to show you why it does here in a second, because again, the whole meme ability, the unique aspect of Solana is the fact that again, it's growing an ecosystem to compete with Ethereum. That's how it's going to prosper, okay, as like the second mover advantage or basically the first mover in what Ethereum couldn't do. Does that make, that make sense? So newcomers in 2023 20, refers to new developers, okay? And this is the whole ecosystem, mind you. We had in 2022 about 6,500 every single month come into the space, which was quite impressive, and about 3,600 per month come into the space last year in 2023. Now, okay, what are you talking about? You know, all these developers coming into the space. Well, if we kind of look at where they were really flocking to, Solana over here was ranked number four. Now, I'm not too sure what other is. I think it's just, you know, other different smaller dApps and so on combined into one. But 4,005 developers migrated over to Solana and wrote code on the ecosystem or the project itself. Again, the fourth highest, technically the three highest, if you're talking about layer one networks. Of course, ETH is the highest, Polygon over here, and then Solana. So quite impressive. And what does this really mean? Well, as we'll see in a second here, it's the layer one flywheel taking effect. This might be a new term, maybe some of you don't know of, but you need to be. It's not a technical thing. It's something that's going to really help you in your crypto journey. And uh, I used to talk about it quite a lot. I haven't really since, but we will touch on it today. So in March 2021, this was the size of Solana's ecosystem. I mean, you could almost count these on your hands and feet, right? Not many projects whatsoever. January 2022, we can see a massive increase in the size of the ecosystem, not even 12 months later. But again, about 12 months after that, we had the massive increase over here, as you can see in the ecosystem. I mean, it's just amazing. I had to scale this down quite a lot. And in 2024, we have over 1,000 applications on the network, which again is impressive. It's not just how many exist currently. It's not this number. It's the growth aspect. And this is where it's going to come into sort of play here. This is what you have to understand for layer one projects. The reason layer one projects become popular and we'll even see an icp here in a second dominic the founder talks about this briefly is that when you're creating the project it has to be sustainable and to make it sustainable you have to of course have financial capital to create value for the token on the network you have to have the validators and miners the nodes securing the network and they will do that based on course on the token value that they're actually making money back but they create platform functionality and platform functionality, of course, allows developers, third party people to come on board and build on the network. And this is what actually creates the applications, which creates the utility for the end users. So when you see the growth in the end users increase, daily active addresses, these continuous inflows of TVL increasing, all this sort of stuff, right? That is an indication that developers are working on the project and of course they're building the useful applications for people to use. Where does this really end up? Well, again, it's a vicious circle, right? That comes back in the form of a strong community, which then forces a strong vision and the project which then comes back around to increasing token value, increasing the platform functionality because more miners and validators want to come on because they're more incentivized to. This flywheel gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason I bring this up is because we can have an insight into this by the community, the very, very last aspect of the token flywheel. Now we've covered already developers, developers are building on Solana, but active users as well, 390,000 per day. That is incredible, guys. 390,000 people using Solana every single day. One of the highest in the space. I think it briefly and maybe still has overtaken Ethereum and interactions 13 million daily active interactions just insane to put it in comparison with other projects 
I think polka dots about 750,000. H bars at 1 million, and that's one of the highest in the space. I think Cardano might be at 3 million. I mean, this is just incredible, right? One of the highest, if not the highest, in the whole entire of crypto because it's not just useful for developers it's not just great for end users like you and i but it also has a great meme behind it it's unique and i think with the saga phone coming out as well the phone i told you about at the start of the video it's only going to get better and better and by doing that by having this saga 2 phone and the old saga phone you know it's actually creating this sort of uh bound between web 3 and web 2 their whole vision again is kind of bringing on the mass market to crypto what do people initially think when they tell their friend and you know uncle or cousin or you know family friend about crypto they used to tell them about ethereum right it was bitcoin and ethereum but now it looks like solana is becoming the actual application chain the useful chain just like i would kind of pair it right next to polygon for example and so again coming all back down to what i'm talking about is it just simply being the eth killer not so much killing ethereum off and beating ethereum and ethereum going to nothing that's never going to happen with layer twos happening now but it pretty much being the vision you know eating the initial vision of ethereum alive now again the reason why i mentioned developers and the overall on-chain growth is because this is what will drive solana to that position it must become a viable alternative to swap from eth as you've seen many protocols do so helium for example uh didn't really swap from eth but just onboarded onto solana make a dow also has said they will come on board and render has just about you know done that full migration as well so most definitely we have to consider these as developers want to build on the network i think the only problem with solana is of course the fact that it does have downtime and i know speaking with some founders this is one of their concerns as well and so let's touch on icp now and i don't want to give too much away i'm still about halfway through making the video for the deep dive on icp so if you are an icp fan you're going to want to be subscribed and so I wanted to still give you guys enough information to show you fundamentally this project is one of the very best in crypto. So it's one of the fastest growing ecosystems. We were talking about developers momentarily there. And so I wanted to bring this back in. Number six on this ranking, okay? So overall monthly developers have increased. As you can see, 37%, which is a good sign. Like I just made a massive rant on developers works in that flywheel to bring an overall growth aspect to the project and also they do have a massive research and development team i'm talking like a lot of people it's the largest in the space and like i mentioned here knowledge is power i don't know if you guys know this phrase or not but again knowledge right so if you guys have seen that meme from back in the day knowledge really is power the more you know the more you can do right if my channel today closed down and youtube cut me off and i had to start anew i have the knowledge and the ability to bring a new youtube channel back just as fast as this one came up in the course of three and a half years and that's what i'm sort of saying you know they make it a very important point here to research the cryptocurrency market they have a very very strong team in this case and that will allow them and afford them the ability to beat their competition and that's sort of what uh, dominic williams the founder and ceo of the Definity Foundation and of course ICP has made a point on many many times and this is a key component I want to mention this was one of Dominic this is Dominic over here hey Dominic one of his tweets he recently had uh, in regards to CPA or cost per acquisition and this is a recent term I have started to apply to other cryptocurrency projects because as he mentions here it's been a staple in investments for generations and yet for some reason no one applies it to crypto let's hear him out trust me this is very important to know he says traditional investors have somehow now been hoodwinked to never think about cpa or cost per acquisition which is a key metric that those of us with prior backgrounds in tech before crypto such as games or web 2 services hold as crucially important along with measures of viral growth viral growth what he's referring to here is the meme ability like i've been telling you guys about for a long time internet computers ecosystems or cpa is something like 200x lower than its competition than its next closest composite competition and what does this really mean well it just pretty much means that every single user that comes on and uses the network that's the cost per acquisition how much money that icp have to pay in the marketing campaign or whatever overall to of course have that back for example if someone sponsors the channel what they're looking at is okay if i pay kyron two thousand dollars for a video and he gets thousand signups what's the cost per acquisition now that's the same sort of terminology and situation i can use many of the main chains are claimed as the future by the flywheel system like i just showed you 
plowed hundreds of millions into wasteful endeavors such as expansive sports sponsorships, which they are now quietly abandoning. Abandoning. So basically what he's sort of saying here is this flywheel that I mentioned to you over here, you can actually bootstrap, you can pretty much create a carrot on the end of the stick for third party developers over here to come and build on the platform if you give them enough grants or enough money, they're gonna to wanna to come on and build. Whereas what he's pretty well saying in this case is that um, ICP is unique in the fact that they haven't had to do that, right? The marketing campaign and these grants haven't really been something they've done. So they have a very, very low cost per acquisition. Basically, people just want to actually build on ICP because it is superior technology. And so in this case, we also have a very important upgrade coming in 2024 for ICP. We'll touch on this now. And this is going to be a key component into, again, my fundamentals research method, which focuses on a key thing here, popularity. When an important announcement comes out or news or partnership that happens, it usually spikes the price of a project up randomly like we can see here with ADA in the last cycle. And in this case, we have a massive update called Utopia that is coming this year. Uh, Utopia stands for Unstoppable, Tamper-Proof Open Platform for Independent Autonomy. I know, kind of gibberish, right? Utopia is a private ICP network providing unstoppable, tamper-proof, serverless cloud infrastructure interoperable with internet computer. So Utopia can be spun up over existing clouds or dedicated hardware. Basically, you can pretty much create a private network leveraging ICP's technology on top of existing clouds or whatever. So you can run it on top of an Amazon web service and have it completely private, uh, leaderless, all that sort of stuff to use for enterprise adoption, government adoption, or your own business, for example. So pretty interesting stuff here. A lot of projects are doing this sort of sovereign cloud thing, but knowing ICP, they're going to make it a much better pro product basically because it'll leverage the I ICP infrastructure. He said the exact mechanisms are to be determined. Again, this is very fresh news. Less than a month ago, he said announcements are coming in in the next few weeks here. So stay tuned. This is, might be very, very big for the price of ICP. Maybe even push it to, again, that level of support Mark was talking about in the charts. Now, he goes on to say, and please pay attention to this. Utopia owners can build their own systems and services on their private clouds, but they'll also be able to install ready-made dApps. So... What he's pretty well saying is here is anyone that creates their own canisters or smart contracts on ICP can offer them in a marketplace to these privately run services for a service. Pretty interesting. So developers now have more incentives to, to build on ICP because they can possibly sell a product to one of these enterprises. And we know this is going to happen because we know the Bank of International Settlements, right? The central bank of all central banks around the world, what they're pretty much doing is looking into automated market makers, cross-chain liquidity pools, basically. And it would serve a great purpose for an enterprise to leverage a canister on, of course, ICP, built on top of their own ICP cloud to then do that, right? Which of course gives these developers more of an idea to do this. So very, very big indeed. Stay tuned. This is just one of the ways ICP will make its battle to the world as we head into 2024. And ladies and gentlemen, that'll conclude today's very long video. Hopefully you have enjoyed everything I have said. If you do want to learn more about these two projects, watch the two videos. I'll leave the links down below to uh, this one here on Solana and this multi combination one here with uh, ICP and HBAR and Render, where I take you through in both of these examples here, how to find exit and entry levels for both of these projects. Please go ahead and watch those. It's for your own benefit. I want to say, watch this line of video first because I do address something that I had to change in the ICP example. So if you don't own any ICP or have no intention to, I would still suggest watching this line of video first, at least until I mention that minor change and then watching the ICP video. So with that said, everyone, thank you again. Please remember, like the video if you have made it this far and enjoyed or learned something new and I'll see you very soon. Take good care.